Wow, you survived stage three. Brilliant! Stage four involves a mini boss. Beat the monster, it isn't that strong. Now insert a coin to start stage four. The sometimes useful edge types. There are only three line types remaining. After we beat them, we'll meet the mini boss, which is the view map options. Suggestive contour. As the name implies, it's not immediately apparent to your eye, meaning you can't see it until you understand it. Unlike silhouette, which one can usually spot before it's drawn, suggestive contour is not clear or easy to put your finger on, sort of like a mirage. Suggestive contour is defined as the lines which would form the temporary contour of the mesh if the viewport was shifted. Now imagine we have a long road in the desert. From the top, or God's eye view, it looks very flat. But from the ground level, you'll see small peaks of sand. Now to really see these peaks, the camera must be at just the right elevation. However, when you drive to any one of the peaks, they kind of slowly vanish and form elsewhere in the distance. Hence the name Suggestive Contour. Suggestive Contour is good for adding semi-abstract details to many organic models, such as sculpted hair or maybe something like rippled water. Since it is very sensitive, it has a tendency to flicker, which makes it unstable for animation, unless you're actually going for that style. In short, Suggestive Contour is the line that might be there, or almost contour and not quite silhouette. Now, Ridge and Valley. Ridge and Valley used to be two separate line types, but we discovered they were two in the same. So we asked Tomito Kajiyama, or TK, Freestyle's main developer, about it. And he went to investigate the magic under the hood since he didn't code it. The original coder of Freestyle was Stefano Grabli and his colleagues at a French research institute. Maxime took the code and integrated it into Blender in his Google Summer of Code 2008 project. Then, TK took over the project after Maxime left. The result is ridge line type and valley line type becoming, big surprise, ridge and valley. It was a fusion merging like Goku and Vegeta, which become Vegito when fighting Majin Buu, and become Gogeta when they were a Super Saiyan 4. Ridge and valley is a pretty clever trick. It finds where the curvature turns from concave to convex, and it draws a line. To visualize that, let's draw something. The curvature turns somewhere here, and Freestyle will draw a line there. It's that simple. In short, when concave turns to convex, between them, there will be a line. Now to the last line type, material boundaries. It's a super simple, weak one-shot kill minion before the mini boss. Two materials on the same mesh, between them, draw me a line. See? Very weak minion. Not even worth a button press. It should probably auto-die when you only look at it. Ha ha ha. Now to the examples. In layer one, we have a wavy mesh, so let's examine it. For suggestive contour, we'll see lines here and here. All correct. But if you use Silhouette to find the edges, it will only render these ones. Why? Well, if we look at it from the side, you can see there is a slight break in the mesh visibility, or we could say there is a distinct difference between the near and far points of this area. For ridge and valley, let's find the border of the concave to convex region. My prediction, they will be here and here. Now we render. The lines are exactly in the middle of the concave to convex regions. For material boundaries, well, I'll let you guess that part. Done. Where will the line be? Now we render and owned. Second example. This time it is a wave starting from the middle of this simple subdivided plane. Suggestive contour will be in the middle around here and over here. Spot on. Now for Ridge and Valley, which we'll call R and V from now on. There is a curve in and out of here and here. So our lines will be from there. Bullseye. Now for the weakest minion of all, the material boundaries. You can guess, of course, where that is already, but we'll just see it for real. Ta-da! All this is good and well from a scientific point of view, but let's get a little bit whimsical. So I'll switch to layer three. 
This looks like a normal chopping board, but it's not. With the magic of freestyle, we'll unveil secret markings. See? Magic. You might ask, how is it done? Well, let's examine the mesh. Nothing too special here. Other than the marked sharp edges, it's a simple subdivided box. The magic lies with R and V, as it desperately finds edges on the flat surface. But wait, what if we can control the markings to our liking? Wouldn't that be cool? You can also use your own texture too. Just make sure your mesh has enough faces for the displacement not to render blocky lines. One more thing. When you edit the mesh, the pattern will change too. Have fun with this. I'm sure you can make something awesome with it. Mini boss time. This one is sneaky. And the mini boss is the view map options. You might wonder, why is the view map options a mini boss? Well, if you don't know what the view map is, you don't know where to find it. It's invisible to you. But when you know what it is, he is just another pew 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 drop dead minion. View map options are at the freestyle panel in the render layer tab, which is this one. Now that we know where it is, we can go sniping from afar. At the top, we see control mode, parameter editor mode, or Python scripting mode. Since the freestyle API has changed often and may change again, we'll only concentrate on the parameter mode as the whole course is. Under it, we can see edge detection options. These edge detection options are basically variables or conditions for view map creation. In a view map, there can be one value for each of these variables. So basically that means you will only have one crease angle value per render layer. Let's discuss each of them in detail. Crease angle. We know that one already. It's used by the edge type crease face smoothness. This will take into account the surface smoothness to draw lines. The best time to use this is when you have broken lines for a curved smooth surface, often caused by mesh being overly dense. When turned on, it'll make sure that the line is drawn continuous. On the downside, it can add a considerable amount of rendering time. Culling. This ignores the edges outside of the camera view. It will not take mesh outside the camera view into calculation. In other words, only visible meshes are calculated, which will save RAM and processing time. Make sure you keep this checked most of the time, if not all the time. Next is a button, the advanced options, which will reveal two variables. By default, when not activated, they both have a value of zero. When activated, you can change the value. To understand what they do, Please refer to the further reading links in the notes. They are math beasts. One advice, ignore this button and you'll do just fine. But hey, we can dip our toes in without getting our whole body wet, right? Sphere radius calculates the curvature for edge types, R and V and suggestive contour. KR derivative epsilon controls the output of suggestive contour and silhouette. Psst, guess what? We've arrived at the end of the stage and we have survived a mini boss. Pat yourself on the back and sing a victory fanfare. To sum it up, well, there's really not much to sum up. You may need to watch this a couple more times to get the full effect. 